I just think that's dead wrong. I think the biggest strategic threat the United States faces today is the possibility of another 9-11 with a nuclear weapon or a biological agent of some kind. You have to consider it as a war. You have to consider it as something we may have to deal with tomorrow. You don't want the vice president of the United States running around saying, oh, it's not likely to happen. Today is President's Day. Yesterday was Vice President's Day, and it was all-out warfare on the Sunday shows. And big political news today as a popular Democratic senator decides to call it quits. Top Line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern time, we're right here bringing you the latest political news and analysis, everything you need to know before you head out the door to lunch. And it's Twitter.com slash the note to stay up to date all day long. Jonathan, kick us off. All right, bye-bye. Evan Bye, popular Democratic senator from the state of Indiana, says he will not run for re-election. This is a devastating blow for Democrats. Consider this, Rick. Look at the lineup right now where you have potential Republican pickups. Louisiana, Arkansas, Delaware, Illinois, Indiana, North Dakota, Nevada, Colorado, and Pennsylvania. Guess what that does? That gets you to 50 Republican senators. Throw in California, and it is no longer inconceivable that the Republicans could win back the Senate. Astounding news, and this caught the entire establishment off guard. Uh, Democrats are scrambling to find anyone for the ballot in Indiana, much less a top-tier candidate. Evan Bay is saying this afternoon, we're to understand that he's just kind of sick of the partisanship and the gridlock and doesn't want to give it a go. A major, major blow to Democratic chances. Veep stakes. Vice presidents clash on the Sunday shows yesterday. My colleague here, John Carl, had the newsmaking interview with former Vice President Dick Cheney, who came out swinging, as always, against the current Vice President Joe Biden, who was bracketing him on the other talk shows. A lot of big headlines out of this, Jonathan. And, and I was struck by the, the, the breaks that you saw between Dick Cheney and George W. Bush in yeah. an unusually public way. I mean, much was made of this being a debate between Biden and, and Cheney or between, you know, Obama and Cheney. This was really Cheney versus Bush. I mean, he made it clear that he disagreed on many of the biggest national security decisions of the second term in the Bush this, you know, term, a closing Gitmo, Bush's desire to do so, uh, looking at the prosecuting terrorists through the civilian courts. This was, a, this was a very interesting part of this interview. And then finally, do ask, do tell. Another aspect of the Cheney interview, the vice president, the former vice president, came out in agreement with Obama's decision to scrap the don't ask, don't tell policy on gays in the military. I uh, made it very clear that as a former defense secretary, he thinks that the time, time has come to scrap the policy. And good luck to Senator McCain holding on to his view on that, that you'll look to the military on this. Dick yeah, Cheney saying he's go. looking to the military, and this is where you end up. And the long break. A week after Washington was paralyzed by snow, they were out of town again. Congress is on a district work period. And these are always interesting. This is the first one of the year. And this, these are interesting to see the feedback that members of Congress get. No motion on the jobs bill. Obviously, we know where health care is or isn't at this point. And, and these can change the politics. They hear from constituents, and that can change things. Yeah, there's no question, especially with the expectations that were raised by the President's State of the Union address, that they would come out quickly enact on a jobs bill and really uh you know to, to borrow a word that dick cheney likes to use it looks like they've been dithering on this <laughs> issue I mean, we still don't have uh any action on a jobs bill out of the senate all right and we begin today with uh, the former governor of virginia douglas wilder a democrat joining us uh, today from richmond a former mayor of richmond as well and governor thanks for being here i, I want to start with your reaction to this uh bombshell announcement by Se senator Bai that he is uh, not running for re-election what does this say to you about the 2010 landscape well, when I was informed of it prior to coming on this show, uh, I said, wow, it, it is, it's tough. I know Evan Bayh, he's a decent guy. I've known him since I've been lieutenant governor and governor and, and debated him, really, for he was a Kennedy person. I was for Obama. But he's a decent guy with good ideas. The Democrats, to lose him, it's big, big, big. How much of a train wreck are, are Democrats potentially looking at in these midterm elections? Well, I think the problem that, that we have is that uh, some people have been whistling by their graveyard as if nothing is going on. Well, everything is fine, and they keep talking about the president's personal popularity. And we see in recent polls coming out in the last several days to show that that might not be the case. And so I think it's anybody's guess as to how bad it could be in terms of the House being taken over uh, in terms of the Senate even now. Let, let's assume this. If you can't do it with 60 votes, <laughs> and if you can't do it with 59 votes, a single reduction 
uh, will bring about a, a great deal of difficulty. I thought that, um, that the jobs bill should have been number one. I still think that. That's why I'm saying the president should have people advising him, stick to the message that you campaigned on. And that's why I'm saying that the Democratic National Chairman got a lot of work to do, had a lot of work to do, and that's why I'm saying I don't know that it's in the makeup of the present chairman to undertake the job to bring the victories that are needed because the, the record doesn't show that it has been so. Well, you, you, you made some news on this last week calling for your successor as Governor of Virginia, Tim Kaine, to step down from the DNC and abroad, as part of a broader shakeup of the White House political operation. What is that based on and what would it accomplish to move some of these people around? Well, first of all, let, let's look at, we lost Virginia by the biggest number of votes in the last 50 years. We lost New Jersey. Well, we lost a seat that shouldn't have been lost in uh, Massachusetts. And then when you look at the special elections that have been lost here in Virginia, it means that you've got to have a message. And that means that the president has to have someone delivering that message that is in sync with what he's doing and what he has in mind. That's why the people around the president, if they're advising him to stick with health care, stay with health care, give the kinds of monies and, uh, for the stimulus package that were given with no strings attached, and then to come back and say, well, we're going to get on jobs, but when? And the confidence of the American people is dwindling on a ready basis. So, so Governor Wilder, you say that Tim Kaine should go as DNC chairman. You're also suggesting a shakeup at the White House uh, staff. Who else do you think should go? Well, it's not a question of the naming of who should go. The question is, how do you strengthen it? I, you strengthen the DNC chair by saying, get somebody else there. You strengthen the operation of the White House by bringing in people. He's bringing in David Plouffe back. What that does, I don't know. But do you need to bring in other people? Do you need to listen to other people? Do you need to reach out to other people who've had some experience what? in governing rather than getting elected? He had the most brilliant team to assemble to get him elected. The question is, are these people capable of governance? What about Rahm Emanuel? I don't know him personally. Uh, does he need help? He might need some help. You think he should be among those who go? I'm not suggesting anyone go. I'm suggesting Except for that Tim the president... <laughs> yes, I did suggest that. But I'm suggesting that the president needs to examine, does he have the best... And it happens in every presidency. Right. And I, the president is a student of history. And I'm quite certain that what I'm suggesting isn't so disruptive. It's critical, but it's constructive criticism. I'm hoping that the president does well. I know most of the American people want to see him do well, but you can't do well the way you have been continuing. You've got to stop that and get a different uh, direction. It, uh, Governor, put the question out to, to followers on Twitter. Uh, the quest, their question of the day today was, uh, was what it would accomplish. What would a, a political or a major shakeup like this uh, accomplish? And one person wrote back, this is at Johnny DeStefano, said uh, the, the problem with a, with a shakeup is that they think if you mistake a political problem for a communications problem, uh, this is a broader issue that the White House is dealing with. Would you not agree than just uh, who the right people are and, and how they're getting the message Oh, yes. I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. That's why what I've said to you, rather than to displace some people or get rid of some people, what is the message? What do you need? What kind of information should you have? Are you listening to the people rather than just hearing them? Are you paying attention to what the needs of the American people are and how they are articulating what they want you to put on the front burners and to deal with them? Jobs, number one, but stay with it and let, certain, let, let people know that you mean that. Uh, let me put you on the spot for a prediction, if you can. If, if, right, th if things going the way they are now, what happens in the House and the Senate? Things going the way they're going now, there'll be substantial gains in both the House and the Senate. The real question is, will the gains be sufficient to take control? More so in the House today than would be in the Senate, but as you and I know, a couple of weeks and a couple of months is a long time in politics. That's All right. substantial Republican gains you're predicting. I do. All right, former Governor Doug Wilder, Democrat of Virginia, thanks for being with us. Appreciate it.